I really don't know how to describe my experience with Kimono Friends, mostly because my decision to watch it was based on my love for the Death Note Mads of Kimono Friends opening theme. <laughs> 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 but also because its outward appearance isn't something I would usually take a second glance at. The idea of anthropomorphic creatures doesn't interest me whatsoever, its animation we know isn't the greatest, despite its background art looking good, and I really couldn't care less about the general fandom of the show, considering it finished airing a good couple of months after I started watching it. But there's really nothing else like it, from what I have previously seen regarding this demographic. Komodo Friends has an extraordinarily strange appeal, as the show definitely feels like it's made for a young audience. Due to its very simplistic word choice and sentence structure, life lessons on friends working together to solve a common goal, showing that everyone is good at something, as well as learning about each species of animal in between its commercial bumps. However, this aired on late night television in Japan, a time slot that certainly doesn't match the content it contains. Could you imagine Komodo Friends airing at around 1am on Adult Swim? Probably not, as it wouldn't make sense given everything else airing, and the same could be applied to Kimono Friends situation as well. However, like an addict, I got hooked immediately, enjoying the series right from the get-go, and I had absolutely no idea why. How can a show like this not only grab my attention, but also keep it for the long haul? Aside from the obvious fun and passionate demeanor it gives off, I think it's also because of the two tones it ends up showcasing. As you watch the series, you start to notice a trend of it progressively moving into its more serious topics, focusing on who Kaban is, along with where the rest of her kind is gone. The series releases subtle hints each episode on where the humans are, along with the fact that the ending animation is that of an abandoned amusement park, but episode 7 is the spark that ignites this flame, more specifically when Kana finds out she is the only human left. The show then starts talking about death, human existence, and just a lot of content that doesn't fit the original mood or style the series initially had. And sure, the series ends all nice and cheery, and I wouldn't want it any other way, but it definitely goes a lot deeper on these meaningful ideas than what is shown early on, especially on the surface level. The animals were abandoned in an unfortunate set of circumstances, but they had to adapt to stay alive. It truly is the lost world, except the animals don't want to tear you to shreds and Jeff Goldblum is a young girl with no memories of her past. There is one interesting detail I think people should discover more, that being the Shubal Stork character, one of the oldest creatures on the planet. Considering it probably saw humans the most before they all vanished, it would know about Kana as well. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but I like to think of it like that. I very well could be overanalyzing Kimono Friends to justify a reason as to why I enjoy this show, and more likely than not I am, but I definitely see the appeal in why Kimono Friends has become so popular. It truly feels like a passion project that is worth your time, especially now that season 2 will probably have none of that passion left. And just Despite it not looking that great, it certainly grows on you quickly. Or at least check out the Death Note Komodo Friends crossover mads. They're great. If you are interested in watching Komodo Friends, you can watch the series for free over on Crunchyroll or Verve. Now what are your thoughts on Komodo Friends? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. Subscribe for more anime related content and follow me on Twitter, Kitsu, and my anime list if you're interested. I'm Kent from Spartan Media Reviews and I will catch you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching.